Pad, it's Maximus here. Let's talk about this Harbor Freight Armstrong uh, wireless charging pad. So Harbor Freight's been coming out with some USB stuff, although it, or <laughs> phone charging accessories, since it seems to be the trend these days for everybody to do that. Unfortunately, a lot of Harbor Freight's stuff is not that great. They have quote unquote high speed chargers, but they're not high speed. They're not multi voltage, uh, high amp chargers, which all which is a little bit cheesy, but. So I do a lot of Harbor Freight reviews, decided to pick up this wireless charger. A lot of people have said this is a pretty useless manual, and uh, indeed it does seem to be pretty useless. Let's not bother with that. It's a traditional coaster style charging pad, a couple little feet. I believe this would be an indicator light. We'll find out in a second, but first we'll compare it against some other ones. These are some more older style ones. This is advertised as being a high speed 10 watt charger what does it say on the back input 5 volts at 2 amps or 9 volts at 1.67 and output good that's about what I would expect such as this new me here which has the same thing so it will be a dual voltage you won't be able to get the full power out of this unless you do have a 9 volt capable rapid charger as far as what I recommend it would be one of these here if I can get my cord unstuck this is the RLC, RLC 506, and it does all voltages up to 20 volts, uh, <laughs> many amps, uh, that's for sure. This is at least a 36 watt or 40 watt charger, uh, something definitely in those ranges. So anyway, as far as size, it's about the same size as other styles. I do like this Mercury one, even though it's a slower charger, just because it's more of a spaceship and the whole ring around it glows, so it's super easy. Uh, to see if it's charging. One thing about these wireless chargers is they do get pretty warm even though the Harbor Freight's packaging says doesn't get as warm and even some reviews most people have phone, phone cases so that actually reduces the charging rate a little bit just because of the thickness of the case. What these are is a transformer and they're using alternating current to induce a, a field or electricity inside a coil in the back of the phone in order to deliver power. And that does, it is inefficient because it's essentially what is known as an open air transformer. On a quick side note, do not charge smaller wireless chargeable devices. I made that mistake with this watch. I did not ruin it because I was taking close uh, watch or <laughs> keeping a close eye on it, watch on it. But if you attempt to charge things like watches with these large charging pads, the coil is so much larger than it is in the watch that you end up getting what's known as the transformer ratio where you have a big a uh, coil to a small coil and it causes excess voltage and you can burn up and ruin uh, a smartwatch attempting to charge it with one of these full-size pads so I did want to make sure I mentioned that there are other styles actually I like this Verizon one a lot just because it stands up so it's easier to use your phone uh, when it's on the charging pad and so that was just a few different little uh, comparisons here we have a interesting corrugated uh, wire kind of looks like a vacuum cleaner cord We'll uh, untwist this and get it plugged in. Who the heck does this? I mean, look, they twisted that all the way up where you gotta use wire cutters to get it off. Got that wire, and then this seems like a particularly cheap cord that came with this, but uh, <laughs> we'll move on from there. Micro USB, because that seems to be what everybody's stuck with, even though USB is the new standard. This is not, oh, there we go. Let's get it in the correct direction. Actually, I already have a wire going right here, so we'll just use that plug it in and see what its charge rate is. Oops, that's a USB-C, no wonder that won't work. We'll go ahead and use this cord here. Plug that in our little charger, plug, our, plug in our little Armstrong here. That is indeed the light. Glows, actually it's supposed to uh, stay red until you put a device on it. If you ever see these blinking, it means that it doesn't have a very good uh, contact there. There we go. Seems to be applying power. Now it's finally figured out that the phone is there. I do have a pretty thick case on this S8. And so it won't be able to deliver full power. But it is indeed going up to 9 volts. And surprisingly enough, it is working pretty well through that case. We can already see at 9 volts at 
1.28 amps is indeed delivering its uh our, or it's pulling more than 10 watts on the charger now uh so surprisingly enough it really does appear to be delivering what it says it should so that's not really too bad at all let me turn off the light for a second this has always been my criticism is so many of these chargers this one this new me here etc you end up covering the darn charging light when you have the phone on it and i don't like how they have uh i actually i may be confused and that may be the default color but once again you're covering it up you can you can't see the light unless you uh remove the device i always thought that was just such a gross error and out of all these that's why i still use this mercury one it's a little slower so the devices don't get as hot but as you can see super easy to actually tell what's going on here and no, I wasn't confused. For some reason, the Armstrong defaults to blue, uh, which I don't like at all. I just don't like that at all. So I like ones that actually change the blue when they are charging. And as you can see, because it's the, uh, the spaceship style, had a little bit of an issue there. Uh, this arm, what on earth is going on there? <laughs> Cameras are frustrating. This charger automatically shuts down to help prevent just oh, long-term trickle charging. So what ends up happening, this is a great example, is they will change, they'll switch colors when it's having trouble charging or doesn't detect the device. But when you put on the device, let's see, it should take a second. There it goes, switches over the blue. And then we'll see the phone after a certain period of time actually display that's charging there it goes so that's my criticism the harbor freight armstrong does work as advertised it does actually deliver fast charge and it does have a pretty good coil because it does deliver through this case where i had to remove it off to use on this old mercury but then the point is is that the indicator light is you can't see it you cover it up and it's the same problem with so many of these chargers and i don't understand it why they don't do something like this where you have a nice blue ring where it's super easy to see that it's charging uh from any angle and I did look at the one of the, uh, I guess, critical points of this is that this is plastic welded together. There's not really anything to service inside, but still, you know, I'm not super fond of products that are essentially permanently sealed because it's not waterproof. You, for some reason, there may be an issue where you do get some moisture in there and you just have to throw it away because you're not able to break it open and properly uh, dry it out. It's a small concern, but it's basically, it's a non-serviceable, it's a glued together product. So I don't really, I'm not super fond when manufacturers do that. Otherwise for 15 bucks, I guess it's actually an okay product from Harbor Freight. Um, it is pretty thin, even if the light is in the wrong location. It does perform. It probably has a little bit of an oversized coil. That's how it's able to make it through just such thick cases like this. Not really a lot else to say. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Catus Maximus out.